for short. Alright, now the first thing we want to do is set a value. And we'll set it to something basic, 10. Now we want to be able to output that to screen. So we'll output. Alright, let's run that. That's basically the whole tutorial. I'm going to build on that. Okay, let's make sure this all works first before we start teaching. Alright, so perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to um, start working with overloaded operators. Alright, that's the whole point of this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to change this number to whatever you want using something simpler than calling a function. Now, to do that we have to write a function. So let's start with void operator plus int value. Alright, so value will be equal to value plus what we passed. Um, also, if you look, you can overload this right here, but we're not going to. Uh, that'd be overkill when you can just do it like this. Alright, so let's test this one out. To do this, we just do test plus 5. And we should output 15 to the screen. Oh. Now, basically, what this is is a function call of operator. So, writing the class name plus 5 is no different than writing this. This is basically what we've written here. Um, this is why I'm saying operator overloading is really not, it's simulated overloading. You simulated the overload of this plus. The compiler is actually interpreting it as a function call, so you're not really overloading anything. I find when I'm teaching someone, the faster they can grasp that idea, the quicker they're going to learn how to operate overload. So think about that for a quick second right there, okay? You're not really overloading, you're simulating a function call. With that in mind, let's, let's, here, let's do an example. You're passing 5 to it, it doesn't matter. But let's say you just want to print a screen, okay? This will demonstrate the fact that it's actually just a function you're calling. You're just calling a function. And you're still getting the 10 because down here we're still outputting the thing. But that's all you're doing, you're just calling a function. Right? Does it make more sense now? I hope I hope it does. Because the faster you grasp that, the better. Alright. With that being said, we can overload operate everything. Um, for example, let's uh, set our value. The insert. Okay, and now this will allow us to set it hard coded um, using the insert operator like this. So we no longer actually need to be able to set the value if we're going to overload it. So we can actually get rid of that line. It would be rewritten like this. Okay, so this, this line is no longer actually needed. So now we're, we're, we're adding 10 to the class and we are we're setting the class to 10 and then we're adding 5 so we should still get 15 see everything's working so let's say for example that we named our class int that is basically all the int is it's one ginormous class with everything overloaded um, intelligent operators things like that that's all it is um, the, the sooner you grasp that too, the more you'll learn how to work with operator overloading. Um, if you want to be able to print it to screen, you can pick an operator. You can make the operators do anything. Um, you can overload the get function like this to print it to screen. Um, the options are actually quite endless. Um, 
other than that, like you, you can even addition test is equal to new addition. It should it'll still work like that and use the for arrow key. Although when you're operator overloading, you still need to use it looks like the arrow like this. Um, just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Pretty sure that's it. Um, so now, let's say for example, you want to be able to take away from it. So now you can output um, output your 15, and now you can take away 6, and if you're at 15, that should give you 9, and then uh, you can print it again, although I'm going to need to drop down a line here, just like that. There you go. Um, it's really just that easy. You can take away the 10. Get your 5. Um, and you can go on from there. Uh, you can also operator overload at the beginning. And it'll do the, the operation prior. Um, like if you were doing a full math equation like um, let's say we have int j okay and now let's say you want to do j is equal to 6 plus and then your, your thing there and you were outputting it directly like this but what happened is it's this, it would be the same as if you're doing J plus plus incrementing it by one and then outputting it or using it in a formula would be no different than doing plus plus J if you were to move the minus from the end of it to the beginning it's um, and you're using it down here in equations and things this here would happen before or after the equation so, for example, whatever, say val was 10, and you tell it to output plus plus TST, it would output the 10, and then it would increment it by doing this after. Or if, you, if it is the way it's written now, you're going to output the 15 because it's going to output the value before it's added rather than after. I'm sure you see where I'm going on this. You should know precedence. On operations and mathematics and other equations and things in your C++ code and how that works already especially when you're working with operator overloading because um, definitely more an advanced topic you can even um, overload this you can you can even start inventing uh, uses for operators that you never commonly use um, you could take the address of operator and you can basically get the values this is an address style even though that's not what you're really doing because basically no matter what you write like if you were to write this it would just whatever function whatever function this is up in your class is what's going to be called so this could be you, you can use this as plus if you wanted to um, or minus let me show you Let's say we want to turn this into a minus. Change this to the minus. See, um, you can invent uses for for operators. So basically, the and sign I've turned into a minus sign just by the way I'm using the function. Although 
doing that would be extremely stupid. You you don't want to do things like that. But you can be creative. Like if you run out of functions and you need to do just one more thing, throw that in there. 